As you all know, the LAPD is working in coordination with law enforcement agencies throughout Southern California in apprehending Christopher Jordan Dorner. Christopher Dorner is wanted for a series of crimes, including assaults on officers and three homicides in Southern California in the past week. The Los Angeles Police Department and our allied law enforcement agencies are implementing all measures possible to ensure the safety of our LAPD personnel, their families, and the Los Angeles community. We will continue to do so until Dorner is apprehended and all threats have been abated. Dorner is to be considered armed and extremely dangerous. Christopher Jordan Dorner is described as a male African American, approximately six foot tall, 270 pounds. He's 33 years of age. He has black hair and brown eyes. Dorner's photos are displayed here. Dorner's, photo, Dorner's vehicle is described as a late model Nissan Titan pickup. It's a four-door, dark gray in color. The vehicle is equipped with a roof rack and a tonneau cover over the truck bed. The truck has black rims and a Department of Defense sticker on the driver's side of the front windshield. We are unsure of the license plate as we believe he has switched plates. There is a possible plate of 8 D is in David 83997. Photos of the vehicle are also on display. We ask that anyone who sees him or this vehicle should not approach or attempt to contact him, but immediately, immediately call 911 and notify, notify law enforcement authorities. The LAPD will remain in constant communication with the Allied Agency until Dorner is apprehended. It is believed that Dorner was involved in the following incidents. On Sunday, February 3rd, 2012, in Irvine, California, a double homicide. During this incident, we believe Dorner shot and killed Monica Kwan and Keith Lawrence while they sat in a vehicle in a parking structure. Wednesday, February 6th, about 8.30 p.m., in San Diego, an attempt robbery boat theft. Dorner attempted to steal a boat from a boat owner in San Diego. He was not successful and fled the location. This morning, at 1.25, in Chino, California, LAPD officers assigned to a protection detail received a tip from a citizen that Dorner may be in the area. They observed Dorner, and Dorner fired upon the officers. Officers returned fire, and one officer received a non-life-threatening wound to his head, a graze wound literally inches from killing him. Dorner fled and due to damage to the, to the police vehicle because of his gunshots, the officers were unable to pursue him. Today, at 145 in Riverside, California, the murder and attempt murder of Riverside Police Department officers. Dorner ambushed two Riverside police officers, resulting in the death of one and the severe injury of the other. I am confirming that Dorner was previously employed as a Los Angeles police officer between February of 2005 and September of 2008. His employment was terminated. Based on Dorner's threat, the LAPD initiated more than 40 protection details throughout the region. These protection details were based on information uh, contained in his manifesto, much of which has been uh, posted online. During the course of the search for Dorner, an officer-involved shooting occurred in the city of Torrance. During that incident, which occurred about 5.15 this morning, LAPD officers received information that a vehicle matching the description of the suspect's vehicle had been seen in the area of one of our primary protection details, one of the people that was under the most serious level of threat. The LAPD officers assigned observed a vehicle matching the suspect's vehicle driving down the street with the lights turned out. Officers approached the vehicle, and an officer-involved shooting occurred. The individuals in that vehicle were hit by gunfire. Both were transported to a local hospital. One has a minor gunshot wound and is in the process of being released. The second person is in stable condition with two gunshot wounds. Tragically, we believe that this was a case of mistaken identity by the officers. The Hearts of the Los Angeles Police Department and my own 
go out to the families that lost loved ones due to Dorner's criminal actions. Anyone who sees Dorner should contact 911. Anyone who has information or tips regarding these crimes is asked to call the robbery homicide tip line. Number is 213-486-6860 or the LAPD 24-hour tip line at 877-LAPD-247. Anyone wishing to remain anonymous should call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-TIPS. Tipsters may also contact Crime Stoppers by texting the to phone number 274637. That's crimes on most keypads. All text messages begin with the letters LAPD. Tipsters may also go to LAPD online and report information and we will uh, act on that information. The city mourns the deaths of Monica Kwan, Keith Lawrence, and our brave Riverside police officer. I also feel great sadness for the injuries suffered by my officer, the second Riverside officer, and the two uninvolved citizens in Torrance. With that, I'll answer a very few questions. I will not answer specific questions about the Irvine homicide investigation. That is the primary agency on that investigation is the Irvine Police Department. But I will answer general questions. Chief, Evan San Diego, there's a, a barricade situation at, at a hotel at Point Loma Base, we're being told, by San Diego Police Department. Our helicopter's over it. Do you have any information if this is indeed Dorner hold up in that hotel at Point Loma Base? I have nothing I can release on that on this time. Chief, the confusion on the color of the vehicle, are you, are you sure what, what for a while it was blue, now it's gray? What is well, it's a, they're, for those familiar with the Nissans, they have a, they have a series of dark colors that are very similar, especially at night. And they have a, a blue gray, bluish gray, and, and so they're, they're easily confused. But we believe that the, the manufacturer would list the color as gray. Chief, um, is one of the scariest things going on here right now. I walked in with a commander this morning and said that this guy knows what he's doing. Is that especially frightening to you? Well, uh, of, of course he knows what he's doing. and We trained him. Uh, he was also a member of the armed forces. Uh, it, is, uh, it is extremely uh, uh, worrisome and scary, uh, especially to the police officers involved. You know, the, uh, the Riverside officers were cowardly ambushed. They, they had no opportunity uh, to fight back, no pre-warning. Uh, you know, imagine, imagine going about your work day having to worry about that threat. Chief, uh, Chief. Uh, the, uh, the donor is actually blaming the LAPD for his actions. Uh, that's what we're reading. You're talking, about a, you're talking about a homicide suspect who has uh, committed uh, atrocious crimes. And if, if you want to uh, give any attribution to his ramblings on the, uh, on the Internet, go right ahead, but I do not. He has uh, multiple weapons at his disposal, uh, including assault rifles. Chief, Chief, specific, allegations specific, allegations power? Power? specific allegations about him being a victim of, of some sort of investigation that, that never uh, saw its way through. Uh, will you be looking back at that case as a result of uh, We look at everything. Uh, that case was thoroughly adjudicated. It was reviewed at multiple levels. Uh, it uh, went to the ultimate for reform of review in the LAPD, a board of rights, where a, two command officers and a civilian representative hear the entirety of the case uh, as represented by an attorney and make a judgment. You know, the, I think that uh, in the analysis uh, you will find Dorner's uh, statements to be self-serving and uh, the statements of somebody that is uh, extremely unhappy with his lot in life. Chief, when did the department, Ryan, have you ever had this kind of did the department become aware of his manifesto? And were there any threats from the department previous to that? You know, uh, I don't know of any, uh, no threats came to my level. Uh, prior to that, uh, we became aware of the, the manifesto this week. Chief, do you guys have the manpower? I mean, what we're talking about, obviously, the detail that you guys are doing, the protective detail, you have officers outside. I mean, do you have, does LAPD have the manpower to adequately protect all all of your officers and their families from this It's extremely, extremely manpower intensive. Uh, the, but the safety of my employees, people that um, come on the job, 
to protect the lives of strangers is, is of utmost importance to me. And I will expend whatever resources necessary. Chief, obviously he's monitoring the media and know what you know and where he might be. If you can direct a message to him at this time, what would you say? Well, I would tell him to turn himself in. You know, uh, this has gone far enough. You know, uh, nobody else needs to die. The Riverside, the Riverside chief called us a direct attack on his department. Would you qualify this as a direct attack on LED? This, if, if you read his manifesto, this is a very, uh, LAPD is a specific target, but all law enforcement is targeted. You know, this is a vendetta against uh, all of uh, Southern California law enforcement, and, and it should be seen as such. Chief, one more question, killing, last one. Chief, he says the killings are going to continue until you publicly come out and clear his name. Is that going to happen? It is not going to happen. Yeah, thank you very much. Everybody appreciate it. I have a Spanish speaker who will be right here. He will be